Okay, so I just woke up, and I thought I would make a video that I've been uh, thinking about for a while, and maybe even a series of videos on uh, education a little bit. Um, some ideas that I have from reading a bunch of books that I've been reading, and then uh, integrating ideas and uh, making my own ideas. This first one is about respecting children. Now, the reason I... Uh, I care about children is, well, I care about children for a lot of reasons, but the reason I'm focusing here about it is not even because um, I have kids or even because I'm a teacher, which I am, but because um, I think that it's obviously childhood is very important in understanding um, why people exist today the way they do. And so um, if you understand how people raise kids, you'll understand a lot more about the world. So the first thing I, I want to say is children are not naturally bad. That's something like, in a way, we're told since we're kids in so many different ways that if we we need to 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 mold kids so they're not these little evil, selfish little things. And and the reality is they they just want to to help. Like their parents, they want to grow. They're ambitious. They're curious. They're explorers. They're all these things that are just you know interesting. They want to understand. They're they're so ambitious. They really want to, you know, be good people. I even remember myself being a kid, and I used to, like, ask my dad for math problems before I ever went into school and do all these things until school killed my creativity, until it killed my curiosity. And so, uh, when people say kids are bad, I just, I think it's ridiculous. They're bad because you're a bad parent, okay? Um, the next thing, kids have an emotion for a reason. This is something that people don't understand. Like, kids have emotions. They get upset about something. And almost every emotion they have, if the same thing happened to an adult, they would reasonably get upset also. So we see kids screaming in supermarkets. You know, they're screaming because their parents are totally neglecting them. They're totally being jerks to them. And so, like, whenever people say, oh, kids just yell and they're are annoying and stuff. They're annoying because no one's respected them and so they have no respect for anyone else. And I always thought, think about at work. If someone asks you for help and he's always nice to you at work, then you want to help them. If someone asks you for help and they always don't respect anything about them, you got to say, screw you, you know? And this is exactly what kids do. So when kids act up, they're saying, screw you to people that treat them like crap. And that's the parents. Okay? Uh, like, but like I said, when they do have emotions, it's oh, oh, but pretty much always just for the same reasons as adults would get upset. So, um, next, going into education, I believe that forcing kids to go to school, not even forcing kids, having kids to go to especially public school is child abuse. Okay, um, the teachers humiliate, coerce, manipulate, bribe, lie, do everything. To, I mean, even when you go, I, I was I was working on my teaching credential for a little while. When you go in it, they just talk about different ways, creative ways that you could coerce them. Like if you find some interest of them, use that to coerce them to learn. Use that to just, it's just like, oh my gosh, just so many. There's nothing honest about teaching whatsoever. It's just horrible. And think about how we raise kids in general. It's just the it's just a long series of lies, coercion, manipulation, bribes, and everything else, and it's all justified. And we wonder why do people accept government? This horrible, you know, manipulating, coercive, uh, you know, institution. Well, of course, it's because they've been forced since they were young kids to accept their parenting and to accept this uh, teaching. And and I mean, I've never seen real parenting that didn't have that wasn't loaded with coercion, manipulation, and everything else. And I've never seen education that wasn't loaded with it. Um, so, yeah. And then, I mean, but it's not just because of teachers. But think about, like, if you're at work and other people at work, you know, stole stuff from you or picked on you or gossiped about you or, you know, people around just were total jerks to you, you would probably leave, right? But we tell kids to stay there because they need to learn to deal with the other people. And this is horrible. It's crushing to a person's self-esteem, to a person's confidence. And I always think, like, like to me, if if someone, do, if my boss doesn't treat me with respect, I don't have a boss now. But if my coworkers don't treat me with respect, if someone doesn't respect me, I'm going to leave. I'm not going to put up with that. My character deserves respect. I'm actually even dealing with my girlfriend's family. They think I'm supposed to deal with them. They didn't treat me with a certain level of respect that I desired. Of course, it's the same level of respect most families treat the boyfriend. 
I'm not willing to put up with it. So I said, bull crap, and I'm not even talking to them anymore or anything like that. I just met them one time, and I didn't like them, you know? My girlfriend, luckily, is awesome, and she thinks I shouldn't talk to them or anything. But, of course, they think I'm crazy. That's okay. I don't mind. But back to education. So the thing is, is I always think when a kid comes home and says, Dad, uh, you know, I, I don't like school because it's boring. It's just boring, right? I mean, that's plenty good enough reason for me not to do something, so why is it not good enough for kids? You don't learn shit in school at all. School's a waste of time. I'm, this will probably be my next video. But, and so boring them, like, to me it's just like, of course you're boring them. Of course. Like, so therefore what can you... Why should you force them in that atmosphere? And the reason is is because you want a daycare. You want to, a place where, you know, where, and, and you don't know any better. Of course, there's parents that are like, oh, I guess I just thought we were supposed to send them to school. But, I mean, it's really just, you know, you don't say that about other people. And, and if you had the same respect for your kids as you did for your neighbor, you'd treat them a lot better. And this is, you know, uh, once we start doing this, we could start looking at, you know, government. We could start looking at how people run their lives. And this is why freedom doesn't exist, because we've been manipulating their, them their whole life to say freedom doesn't exist. And you just need to force yourselves into these horrible situations. Life is crap. You have to deal with the crap. Oh, well, so that's the end. So, yep, just thought I'd make that video. Please leave any comments, and I should be making some more videos soon on education. Okay, I uh, wanted to make a video. I kept making outlines for my next videos for uh, for my education, and I kept coming back to this topic. I kept being like, having to justify this topic, so I figured I'd make it my next video, and then I can move on to the rest of them, even though this is so important to understand for anything else I say in the future for uh, my ideas in education, and it's on human nature, okay? Now... I think that we have, in many ways, made a lot of uh, leaps, at least within libertarian anarcho-capitalist kind of circles, in respecting the adult, the human nature of adults, okay? But I don't think we have any respect for children and uh, the human nature of children. And I think that is uh, of utmost importance, okay? Because the thing is, is the enslavement of adults is based off of our enslavement as children, okay? Um... And so let me give examples of all the of of the kind of things I hear, um, you know, when people say when people believe that humans need to work off of coercive force. Okay, people say stuff like, "Well, if there's no welfare, no one would take care of the poor." Well, any libertarian would say that's a ridiculous argument and bring up a, a million examples. Okay, if someone says, "If there's no regulations, businesses would be out of control," etc. Right. And every libertarian, once again, would say, well, that's ridiculous because of this. If no drug laws, everyone would be stoned and kill people, right? Of course, all the libertarians, all the, the liberty-loving people could say how these things are absolutely ridiculous propositions, okay? And they would say, we do not need to use force in our human interactions. We do not need it, okay? And, and it's just because of our addiction to force, our addiction to force people to do what we want them to do, to that makes us, that, that, that makes you even believe that that's necessary, okay? And I would like to make a proposition that out of all the people that have influenced me on my ideas on children and education, which I could think of five in some way, that's Harry Brown, Alice Miller, Stephen Molyneux, um, um, Ayn Rand even, and John Holt especially. Um, all, you know, talked about it. I don't know any of them made the claim I'm going to be making now, okay? Um, and that is, I do not need believe that we need or should ever use force on children, ever. Like, and if you think about how big of a claim I'm making, okay, you would see how mind-blowing it is, okay? I'm saying you don't ever use force on children. Now I'm going to make one sh small exception, but it's the same reason you should use force on adults, is that if a blind man's going to walk into the street, you'd stop him right then, right? And that's technically using force on the blind man, but the reality is, is you're saving his life. The same thing I condone for if a kid's just about to, you know, walk into the street and there's a car coming, you stop him. You don't, you know, so, but it's the same thing we'd use on adults. Now, I'd like to make the comparison to a wife. Okay, someone says, well, what if the kids don't want to, you know, do, you know, go to my mom's house? I would say, what if your wife doesn't? 
Do you force your wife to go? Do you grab her by the arm, tie her down in the chair, tell her to shut up and sit down? You don't do that. Why? Because you have respect for your wife. We don't do that to kids. If the kids don't want to go, we say, oh, well, you're coming, right? Well, why can't we have a logical discussion with the kids just like we would have with our wife and show them the same amount of respect? Because there's a reason they don't want to go, okay? This is something we don't understand. That, uh, and, and if we start understanding that you just children's emotions exist for a reason, this is so, like, so important to understand. And almost everything they'd get upset by, we'd get upset by too, okay? So... Um, once we start respecting children's emotions as equal to our neighbors and everything else, we'll start looking at parenting a totally different way, okay? Now, a lot of times people say, you know, make all these claims, just like I feel like they do towards libertarians about, you know, but if you don't force to kill children, they won't learn, then they'll steal, then, you know, they, they'll they jump into fire, I don't care. You know, they'll make up all these things. Why? You know, you have to force children to do what you want them to do. And I think the first important thing, obviously, is to stop ignoring the child's environment, okay? Is that what happens, people see some kid acting like a jerk in a supermarket or whatever, a restaurant or movies, right? And they think, wow, those parents need to force that kid to shut up. Well, they, what, what we're not seeing is what led the kid to be such a jerk, to be so loud and inconsiderate. Why is he doing that? And I believe it's because the parents acted like a jerk to the kid. That a kid doesn't naturally act like a jerk. I believe that children are naturally curious. They want to know more. Just like anyone watching this video, you want to have more information. That's why you're watching my, my video, because you know that I'm just an encyclopedia. And you want to gain knowledge from me. Um, I'm half kidding. Um, so... Children are naturally curious. You don't need to co coerce them to learn. I mean, the first two years of their life, no one forced them to learn language or anything else. They naturally wanted to learn, okay? Children are naturally good-natured. If you treat a child with respect, he's just like an adult, okay? Imagine that you work with, you you you, you work somewhere, and you have two uh, two people that you work with. One treats you with respect, is always nice to you, and he says, hey, can you take out my trash for me? You would say, okay, stand up right then and take out the trash. The other guy pushes you around and acts like a jerk to you, and he says, hey, can you take out my trash? You'd say, screw you. Now imagine that's your boss and you get fired if not. You would say, okay, and procrastinate. Okay, you'd put it off to the last second, um, try to piss him off in a way, but then go, oh, I didn't know, I'm sorry, right? This is what you would do, okay? And this is the same thing a child does. That's not what we see. That's, that's, this is why everyone's ignoring the child's environment, the atmosphere, to lead the child to be a jerk. And the last one, children are naturally self-interested. Okay? They don't want to get hurt. They're not going to play with power tools irresponsibly unless no one is willing to answer their questions or help them or, and stuff like that. You don't need to say, don't play with my power tools, right? Instead, show them how to play with the fire tools. Don't tell them, not, don't play with the stove. Instead, say, hey, let me show you a little bit about the stove. Because children don't want to get burned. They don't want to lose a finger. They don't want to do anything like that, okay? And they only do that stuff when either acting like a jerk or uh, to their parents or... Um, or being irresponsible for some other reason other than their than their natural, just like adults, that we're, there's reasons we're irresponsible. So the thing is, I think it's so ridiculously important that we stop forcing kids to do every anything, and I mean anything. Okay, this is my basis for saying all schools are wrong because you can't send a kid into a school and the school will let them do what they feel like doing for the most part. Okay, now if my wife if my girlfriend, I don't have a wife, um, if my girlfriend wants to do whatever she wants, okay, then I say you can do whatever you want, but th there's certain penalties to, you know, doing anything that you want. So if she wants to, you know, cheat on me, well, then, you know, I'm not going to probably date her anymore, okay? Now, a kid, a, a parent has so much to do with the way a child forms and the, the respect a child will have, okay? And if you show a child respect, then they'll show you respect and, and they'll give you credibility. 
So it, it, like in any relationship, we, we need to negotiate, we need to learn to um, get along. I'm not saying negotiate morality, that's not what I'm saying, but we need to learn how to get along and and understand each other's desires. And, and your kid, if you say to your kid, hey, you know, we need to go to mom's house and I, I really don't want to leave you here for these reasons, if your kid respects you and likes you, he'll go, okay, I understand that. Now I'm sure everyone's, oh, well, in your magical world and utopia, well, most of the people listening to this are some sort of libertarian, and I can, this is the same bullcrap everyone says about politics to you, okay? And think about it. Anyway, um, I thought I'd make this because it's so important for me to make this video before I move on, and that's about it. Okay, I just got out of the shower and I thought I'd make my third video on um, on education. This one will be obedience. I read a book somewhat recently called Obedience to Authority because it's what's been on my mind in which uh, it talks about how obedient um, people are even when they inflict horrible pain on someone. If someone that uh, of higher authority pretty much says to do something horrible, most people will do it, at least, you know, when the the experiment was taken even in America, you know, really comparing it to a lot of the Nazi crap. So I thought that was really interesting, an amazing experiment, super interesting. I encourage people to read that book. But I think that um, a lot of people from reading that book or from thinking about it would think that obedience is a natural thing that people are born with. And I think that's ridiculous. I think obedience is taught, especially when you look at how people are raised and everything like that. And the people that are raised in less, uh, in atmospheres where obedience isn't preached as strongly, they tend to not be as obedient. And um, and people that are in atmospheres where obedience is, is, is put up as a higher virtue tend to be more obedient people. Or sometimes they rebel, but you know. So... The first thing that we have to do is actually destroy obedience, okay? Because if, 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 by just saying obedience is not a virtue, that's not enough. But obedience is not a virtue, okay? Once obedience is a virtue, no other morality is possible, okay? Because if I tell you to kill someone, if obedience is a virtue, you must kill someone, okay? Now, therefore, that violates all other, you know, virtues, you know, the non-aggression principle. Um, it violates pretty much everything else once obedience comes a virtue. Philosophy is totally irrelevant if obedience is a virtue, okay? So, obedience is not a virtue. In fact, I don't see anything good about obedience, even for a child, for anything like that. A child should do things because they're good and right, or a child should, um, you know, question any authority. I don't believe in using force on a child. And so, therefore, the child would grow up to use his own cognitive abilities to determine what is right and wrong in the world, which I do not believe is unreasonable whatsoever. Okay? So now let's relate this to schools. Okay? And that is the first principle of any school, I've never seen any exception, is obedience. Why? Because as soon as you walk out the door, everything stops. Okay? The teacher stops. The teacher will tell you to get back in your seat. If you keep going... The police will track you down and take you back to class, okay? The reality is you are forced in school, and there is no reward or punishment. Um, everything stops once obedience stops. Uh, once, Yeah, exactly. So um, the first principle of any school, and I don't care how liberal the school is. Like, I think Montessori schools are a million times better than regular schools. But the first thing there is obedience. You have to do what the teacher says. And if you stop doing what the teacher says, then you get in trouble. And it doesn't matter if the teacher's moral. It doesn't matter if the teacher's anything. You have to do what the teacher says. And I think that's ridiculous. It's not up for debate. Now, if I'm homeschooling my kid and we're learning and he says, you know, Dad, I want to go outside. I'd say, okay, let's talk about that. Why do you want to go outside? Because outside there's fun stuff. That's Honestly, my reaction would be like, yeah, it's a good reason to want to go outside. Okay, why don't you go outside? Right? But that's not, that. therefore, it's not saying obedience is a virtue. Okay? But in school, I've never seen a school that can say obedience is not a virtue because they have to keep you there, right? If my kid wants to leave, that's cool, and, and we'll talk about things, okay? So, therefore, there you go. All punishments and rewards, once again, are first 
all around obedience. I mean, think about how many gold stars people get, how much favoritism is played for the kids that are more obedient, and how negatively everyone looks at the, the kids that are not as obedient. And also, the conformity of schools. You know, the, the students do it just as al along with the teachers. The, stu the teacher demands obedience. The other students expect you to obey the teacher and, and expect you to conform to their standards, um, which is absolutely ridiculous. And usually grades even go along this line. People have grades based off of how well you obey and how often you attend school. And this is, in, in my opinion, criminal. It's just lying on, because your, your grade should be, if you get an A in math, it means you are excellent in math, right? But if you don't show up, why in the world is that a B all of a sudden? That's ridiculous. If you know the material, it doesn't matter if you show up in reality. If you know the material, it doesn't matter if you obey. And this is just controlling bullcrap that we are taught, okay? Because no one trusts you. No one trusts schools. This is all what grades are. I think grades are bullshit. Tests are bullshit. And the reason is, is because it's all saying we don't trust you. Okay? And of course, kids implicitly understand these ideas. They subconsciously know what they're saying. And so kids, for self-fulfilling prophecy, once again, feel our, the prophecy set for them. They're, they're told over and over, kids, you're not responsible, you're stupid, you need, you're not trusted, and everything else. And they fulfill that prophecy. I believe that kids, prob there's no reason a 10-year-old can't drive a car, except that we don't trust them, you know? Um, and, of course, what we all do is say, when I was 10, I didn't trust myself, therefore I shouldn't trust 10-year-olds. Well, same thing with 16. I talk to parents all the time about how they should let their kids free before they're actually 18. That way it's not such a shock and they do drugs and everything when they go to college like I saw everyone do. And then everyone's like, oh, you don't understand. I'm like, yeah, when I was 17, I was totally free. I could do whatever I want. And it actually, I think, helped in my development greatly. So, um... Yeah, I thought I'd talk about this obedience. I don't think there's any way to escape it. There's every school demands obedience first. That is the first thing it demands. And this and and of course it's teaching that obedience is important and obedience is a virtue. It is the first virtue in school. The first thing, okay? No other virtue comes after obedience in schools. And so and there's no exception. Every private school, every Montessori school, every I, I just there's no such thing as an exception. And homeschooling is the one exception where um, this can escape because you can live by your morality. Now, of course, it doesn't necessarily have to be this way, but you'd have to get rid of compulsory education, and you'd have to get rid of um, um, the morality, but that everyone, pretty much everyone, has except for me and some people like me. So I thought I'd uh, make that video. Please tell me what you think down there. And that's a Okay, so I thought I'd make my third video, uh, fourth video on education called Bribes and Threats, and to talk about um, school more, okay? I call it bribes and threats because that is all school is, is a series of bribes and threats. And I thought I'd go over it from start and show the implications. Teachers, when you start off very young, you do things, for example, for gold stars, okay? You get little stars or stickers or little rewards. And what this is saying, let, let me give it an example of when I was a, a kid in uh, Awanas. Awanas is a Christian organization that exists, like, all over America, at least maybe even all over the world. Um... And it's just how to get uh, kids to, it's t ways to bribe um, kids into uh, loving God, pretty much, okay? And I would be in Awanas, and they would ask us to memorize verses. And by memorizing verses, we would, like, get little checks on our cards. And with enough checks on our card, we got little badges to put on our Awanas uniforms, okay? And so what this made me do was l memorize a verse, which I only had memorized for that week and totally forgot. I had no idea what the context of the verse meant. Okay? I didn't know what anything meant. All I knew is I was reaching for that badge. Okay? And so I memorized verses. I had no idea what they meant. And then I'd go and um, get my badge and put it on my uniform. Okay? That was the whole goal of Awanas. Okay? And it made me learn, obviously, absolutely nothing, even though people thought that it would teach you stuff. 
So, let's look at the next thing with grade. Now, with the gold stars and stuff like that, from when you first start school on, that's all it is. Grades. Grades are a punishment and a threat, all mixed up in one, okay? You get good grades, then you get praise. And if you get bad grades, you get condemnation. Of course, we believe that the only way we can, kids will learn is through bribes and threats. But, of course, as we get older, is that, the, is that why we learn? You know, there's tons of things you wanted to learn as a child that weren't about bribes and threats. In fact, before I ever got into school, I wanted to learn, and most people do if they have a uh, uh, and a, a good atmosphere um, encouraged by their parents. So um, grades, what do grades say? It's, it's just like, oh no, I better do this work and make it look like I'm learning. That way I could get a good grade. Or, you know, or just out of a fear, you know. So you, you do everything for rewards and punishments. And the same thing goes with then the embarrassment. What I think is disgusting, and it gets me so mad to think about, is something so common that no one even questions, is the embarrassment. Teachers do what they can to embarrass kids into trying to listen to them, right? So they're up there and they're teaching, and some kids is like kind of doodling or gazing out in the distance, and they try to point him out and do what they can to embarrass him. They call on him figuring he doesn't know therefore maybe next time so he won't get embarrassed he'll do it and it's just using embarrassment as this horrible tool and trying to destroy a kid and make him feel like shit so he'll listen to you oh my god what evil bull crap like god that's just horrible like if people did that to you as an adult you would rightfully say fuck you what an asshole right but we think that's perfectly okay to do to children. Perfectly okay, right? And it's just like, oh my gosh, what ridiculous. And then we get to the student's level. And, you know, kids don't want to raise their hand because if they have a question, then it might say that they're stupid. And so every other kid's going to think they're stupid. And so this whole social atmosphere then builds up around, you know, people being stupid, disobedient. And everything's just built up to squash your individuality, to crush it, because individuality is the enemy to any coercive institution, such as school, such as government, such as religion. All of these things kill your individuality because they know their doctrines cannot survive with individuals. You must be a lemming. And what does all of these things, all of these bribes and threats tell you? Care what everyone else thinks about you because that is what is most important in life. What you care is irrelevant because if you try to do what you want to do, if you try to care about what you want to care about, You'll get slaughtered for it. Your teacher will condemn you. Your other kids will make fun of you. You'll get bad grades, no gold stars, and you'll go home crying at the end of the day. That is what happens when you are an individual. You have to care about what everyone else thinks about you, and once you stop doing that, you will get killed for it. Okay? That is what te schools teach you. That is the bribes and threats of school. Okay? And what happens is it turns into this game. Okay? That it's all this game about avoiding um, punishment and trying to get rewards. And that's all what school turns into. It's not about learning anymore. And all you have to do, I encourage everyone to go and sit down at a class and t pick five kids out. And throughout an hour, pick one at a time and just observe him for an hour. Okay? And you'll realize that not a single kid really listens in school. Like, he'll try at times when the teacher looks at him to nod, but then when he doesn't nod, he scribbles, you know? Or everything else. And think about yourself as a kid. Really think about yourself sitting in a class. Okay? Every once in a while, there might be this interesting topic that you go, huh, interesting, whatever, right? But for the most part, you're sitting there ignoring it, totally doodling, doing whatever you want, but trying to do whatever tactics you can to make it look like your list interesting because you want the rewards and you don't want to put up with the threats, okay? And it, it's just this horrible, ridiculous atmosphere. I really became illuminated to it when I started reading uh, How Children Fail by John Holt, which usually, which a while ago, um, in the 50s, late 50s, it, no, it came out in the early 60s, I think. Um, very popular book when it first came out. Um, but, you know, it's, I think, a pretty unheard of book now. There's still, it, there's newer editions than the one I have. But I suggest everyone to read it. Absolutely amazing book. Totally opened up my eyes to what schools really do and looking at school from a kid's perspective and realizing not a person learns a damn thing worth the time. Um, at school and like some people might profess that they do but they always have an agenda anytime someone comes up to me and says they learned in school there's always an agenda they always have a reason to tell me rather than just objectively looking at it because I could destroy it that'll be the subject of my next video though so um, please feel free to leave any comments down there and that's a
Okay. So I thought I'd make my fifth education video. I thought I'd delay um, the one I said I'd do this time uh, for a couple videos from now. And uh, But I thought I would talk about this one on what should you learn. Okay. Um, I think this is a, an idea with school. When I talk to people, people about what kids should learn, they always ask me questions about, well, how are kids going to learn X, 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 X? Okay. And, um, and so I thought I would say for the most part, they don't need to learn those things that you think they need to learn. And so what we do as people is when we get a certain type of knowledge, we believe everyone should have it, right? And especially experts, right? So people that do chemistry, they think everyone needs to know chemistry because they're the expert. And the more valuable they can make the knowledge that they have, the more valuable they can be. Okay. For example, I like to think I'm a pretty skilled musician. And as a musician, and as all the other musicians I know, they all want to say, we need more music in schools, and kids need to learn more music. And to me, I like to moderate myself. Even I, I had the problem with this. I said, why, if without school, how are kids going to learn this and this and this and this? And eventually I really realized that almost everything I said, kids didn't need to learn whatsoever. Or people didn't need to learn. In fact, they never used it. Okay? And there's so many things that are more of hobbies. Okay? Some of these, were, I'm gonna, I wrote a short list for like uh, just five minutes ago on just some of the subjects that I thought of the top of my head that I thought more of as hobbies than um, real subjects, and I'll explain some of them. So I wrote some of them down. Anatomy, really, in reality, we don't need to know where your clavicle is. It just doesn't matter, okay? A doctor needs to know, and if you're going to be a doctor or a nurse, learn where the clavicle is. Otherwise, it's really never been that helpful. Really think about it, okay? Because I know for me, th this is a hard thing. Um, later, you know, same thing with geography. You know, knowing where Italy is, it seems like, how oh, do kids not know where Italy is on the map? You know what's more important to know where, not, where something is? The supermarket. Because you're never going to walk to Italy, okay? You don't need to know how to get to Italy. All you need to know is how to get on a plane and fly to Italy, okay? Other, and you don't need to know uh, geography to know that. And so totally, geographies and anatomy, kind of total waste of time. They're hobbies. Now, a kid will get curious sometimes where things are, and that's wonderful. Have a globe in the house. Show them where, where uh, something is. Have the human body in the house or skeleton with all the bones marked. Great, if they're interested. If they never learn that crap, I've never used it in my life. I think I'm pretty good with anatomy and geography. Total waste of time. Shouldn't have learned it. Okay, If I was interested, I should have, but I really wasn't very interested. Okay, so next, chemistry. I've never used chemistry. I own a pest control company, which technically we use chemicals, right? It seems like chemistry would be a good thing. Nope, never used it. I've never used it. What a waste of time, okay? And no one, 99.9% .9 of people will never use chemistry. Why the heck does that exist? Biology, okay? It seems like it's a little more practical. Yeah, but still it's not. Like, it just doesn't matter. It's a hobby. Sociology, geometry, calculus, music, Physics, foreign language, environmental science, which maybe shouldn't exist at all, at least in what it does do, trigonometry, statistics, astronomy, all of these things are hobbies, okay? They're really not things anyone uses. I mean, even algebra. I mean, there are people that use algebra, okay? But not really, and, and if you wanted to be an accountant or something like that, even though accountants, for the most part, use basic math, an engineer, then you'd say, okay, I think I should take some algebra now, right? That's an advanced sort of class that you might think about taking, even though I would, say, get a book. That's probably a better use of your time, okay? All of these things. Astronomy. Do you need to actually know that there are eight planets in the solar system? Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. We don't need to know that stuff. It's useful for absolutely nothing except for hey, did you know Mars is the fourth planet and we might be going there? Oh, the U.S. government, I hate saying we, I shouldn't have said that. So, it's it just total, who cares? It doesn't matter if someone thinks we have five moons, unless they're a meteorologist or something, it just doesn't matter, okay? So, um, I, I remember when I was in school just learning about the most irrelevant things. In fact, I can't remember spending any time on something actually relevant. I remember learning about clouds, the cumulus and nimbus. Never use that. Totally irrelevant information. Now, if I'm curious about those things, great, okay? That's a hobby. Shouldn't be a waste of time in school. Mythology, like Roman mythology, 
Who cares? It just doesn't matter. Parts of speech. This is an interesting... I was talking to my brother the other day, and I, I even said, like, what about parts of speech, like noun and verb? You actually need to know nouns, because someone needs to know, hey, this is a spoon. But people will learn spoon automatically without having to know it's a noun. So noun, verb, adjective. We actually don't need to know anything about that stuff, unless you want to play Mad Libs, okay? So it seems like we need to know all this stuff, but we really don't, okay? School, the stuff that you apply in school is is just very very rare basic math reading you know that's about it so I, I put together the subjects that if I really suggested a kid to learn these are pretty much it writing reading basic math logic logic psychology philosophy and health okay however I believe a kid will desire to learn most of these subjects anyways on their own okay because they desire to live in the world um, that will be the subject of an of a future education video so, but we don't need school for any of these things. All school teaches us is random hobbies, especially after elementary school, okay? Because uh, even out of the things I did read, you know, uh, psychology and philosophy and logic, they're not things that are taught in school or when they are. It's just that they find a way to make it a big waste of time. So this, all of this applies to exactly like people say, how would kids learn how to read and write? And I believe the kids that don't know how to read and write had really screwed up childhoods, and that's why they never learned how to read and write. Um, and I'll give an example for most of the people with a computer. How many people really needed someone to teach them how to use the computer? Very few, but they learned because they want to function in the world, okay? Reading is so important to functioning in the world. I only believe a defeated kid um, that really has a horrible childhood will not desire to learn how to read. And same thing with people with computers, okay? The computer example really shows that we don't need school to teach us things. You're going to learn things on your own with or without school. We need to stop listening to the experts, stop listening to the teachers. In fact, I'm a huge advocate of saying teaching is a big scam. It's a big scam. They're trying to scan you out of your time and your money because you don't need a teacher. You don't need any of that stuff to learn. A big waste of time. They try to teach you stuff they think is important and rarely is it actually important. So um, please, if, if, I, if there's a subject that I miss that's really important that kids go, leave it down there. I'm sure I miss tons that no one really needs to learn. You know, it took me a while to get these ideas because, you know, it seems like people should learn these things. But in reality, they just don't need to. If you're not going to use the information, then it's a hobby. If people just don't regularly use the information, then it's a hobby or it's something that you need to know for your job. So anyways, please feel free to leave any comments down there. Okay, I thought I'd make my fifth video on sixth video on education, and this is going to be talking about the classroom atmosphere, okay? Now, I know that I, I'm not even really pro-schools or pro-classrooms, pro so I'm kind of working in the premise that classrooms exist, we'll say, for this argument, um, just to talk about a dynamic that I think is important to understand. The first thing to understand is the whole classroom atmosphere is based off of coercion. It's based off of force. It's based off of getting in trouble. Because if you don't listen to the teacher, if you don't do exactly what the teacher says, you're going to get in trouble. Okay? So to act like we can have some non-contrived atmosphere where people could be free to share ideas and enjoy themselves when really they're just forced to be there. Maybe some kids would choose to be there otherwise, but you know what? They're not given the choice. And so it's forced. Everything's forced, and therefore it's a whole contrived, horrible, horrible atmosphere, okay? To think that, you know, this is fun or something like that, you know what? Maybe certain aspects can be, but it's all based off of coercion. They have to feel free to question your authority, and yet they just don't. I always even think it's funny when, uh, when a teacher or a parent says, yeah, you know, I encourage them to question authority, and then once they question their authority, they might go, oh, how cute that you're questioning my authority, yeah, but I don't really care, you're listening to me anyway, you know, and that's not really being free to question your authority. So, next, I'll move on from that, understanding, obviously, that this whole thing is now BS, we'll still cons uh, consider other parts, because it even has effects on all other atmospheres that we enter into, whether work or anything else. I think it's important in school, work, anywhere you go, to have an atmosphere where you feel free to question, where you feel free to share your ideas and emotions. Otherwise, you're going to repress. You're not going to like the atmosphere and feel respected in that atmosphere. Okay? Now, by full f feeling free to, to question things, I'm not talking about feeling free to... Um, 
Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm not just talking about, like, being free from force. You know what I mean? I'm talking about not feeling like you'll be a social outcast. Not feeling like the teacher will laugh at you. Not feeling like people will intimidate you or make you feel bad, okay? That you really feel free to question things without any, you know, horrible repercussions of people going, you're stupid and stuff like that, okay? That's what I mean when feeling free to ask questions. And if you really think about it, how many atmospheres of that really exist? Where someone could just really ask true questions about whatever the class was about, and they wouldn't get, like, laughed at, you know? This just really doesn't exist uh, to, to a good level. Um, my girlfriend had a history class a little while ago where um, the teacher came in saying, hey, you know, history, a lot of it is just uh, different ideas about it. There's different ways to look at it. But then she talks about how he talks about his own ideas and how they're so much better than everything else. And all of these other ideas are ridiculous, you know? Well, he doesn't realize that that's really harvesting an atmosphere that a kid's afraid to be called ridiculous, you know? So... You can't, and then, like, if people raise their hand, you know, the, the teacher would, would uh, call on them, and then he would ask a question, and then other students in the class would be kind of jerky to him, you know? It's just a really horrible atmosphere. And in, in a good atmosphere, someone would feel free to ask the question because the teacher would welcome it. But not only would the teacher welcome it, they would stop others from being a jerk to that kid for asking the question, okay? This is something I've seen so many times, and it frustrates the crap out of me. And that is, uh, I'll take my class for example. Um, a kid asks a question, um, and another student says, gosh, if you listen to Mr. White, then you'd realize that, uh, and then I, I, I stopped them and I said, hey, you know what? I, I understand, maybe I did say it at some point, but maybe he didn't hear me or wasn't listening at that point. I don't think it's fair for us to talk to him that way. You know, he had a real question, and for us to now talk to him like he's stupid for bringing that question up really makes it so people don't feel free to ask questions in this class, you know? And so this is kind of what I'm talking about, about, you know, people truly feeling free. I got, I started on some of these ideas originally with reading uh, several years ago um, Ayn Rand's essay in The Virtue of Selfishness called uh, The Argument from Intimidation. A great essay. I, I liked it. And then reading about Ayn Rand, it seems like she does it all the, over the place, whether consciously or not, like on biographies of her talking about um, different situations and atmospheres that she produced. And then the same thing happened, like, happens with like Stefan Molyneux when some guy questions him. He just, Stefan Molyneux just made a video a little while ago um, uh, where I even wrote criticism where he's like, uh, this Ming vase thing happened. I don't know. Well, what if a Ming vase? And he really like disparaged the guy and made the guy feel stupid for asking the question. And I think that's so unfair and mean. And it makes everyone else not want to ask questions. And this is a horrible, horrible thing. Okay? We need to stand up and say this isn't cool. I wrote a, I, I'm not a wrote, I made a video a little while ago called uh, Criticalness Kills Creativity. And it's probably my favorite video that I've made. I'm going to probably link it down at the bottom. I was actually disappointed because it's like probably my favorite video and like not many people watched it. And I was like, dang it, you know? But, um, so I'm going to link it down there. I encourage you to watch it because it really has a lot of influence on these ideas. So, you know, it, it's just really important to have a great atmosphere where you feel like you can question. You can put your ideas and emotions out there and people will respect them. And of course, you know, because of uh, how most people exist today, it, it's just it's not going to really happen very much. You're not going to find atmospheres like that. And so in a lot of ways, I do encourage people to be more secluded because if you get, like to me, take an atmosphere like that or don't be in an atmosphere like at all, then, you know. So anyways, that's about all that I was going to say. And now that's about it. Please feel free to leave any comments at the bottom. Okay, I'm making my seventh education video. And this one, I want to attack schools in general. I could have made a video series attacking public education. I'm sure plenty of my subscribers would have watched them, but I think most of my ideas, if you watch any of my other videos, are pretty understandable about public education in general. And so, no, I did not attack public education. Now, is it in the realm of my attacking? Yes, it is. But I am attacking schools at its core. I'm not letting anything escape. And so this video is me attacking schools at their core. 
I don't think education should be separated from reality. Look at a baby. Did a baby need to learn how to speak English? Did it need to go to a school to learn how to speak English? Think about how hard the task is of learning for a, for a kid that young. I'm sure it's very hard. I don't remember doing it. Okay, Very confusing, distressful time, but probably the most efficient way to learn it Okay, is getting into reality and learning as we go. And this is exactly what education should be. Education should never be separate from reality. Okay? We should take reality, and when we see reality, then we decide to educate ourselves, to take education outside of reality and send people to a place for education outside of the real world. That's ridiculous. What we need to do, what children need to do, adults, babies need to do, is see the world, see reality and let reality dictate what they should learn, okay? This applies to everything. Reading, if I'm a little kid, and I will see the importance of reading. I will take it upon myself to learn. I might get a book. I might just slowly adapt and ask questions, and that will teach me how to learn. <clears throat> what about science? Well, chemistry, pretty irrelevant science for the vast majority of people. And so the child that becomes interested in a subject that values chemistry, he will desire to learn chemistry himself, okay? Because he sees the practicality of learning the task, okay? This is taking reality and letting reality dictate what we should learn rather than people. Don't let people dictate what you should learn. Don't let organizations, don't let groups, and don't let schools tell you what you should learn. You should learn what you want to learn by observing reality and look what reality demands of you to learn. Okay? You set goals. Okay? The is ought dichotomy is all based it's all solved once you make a goal, you know? If you say, hey, you're somewhere right now, what should you do? You shouldn't do anything. But if my goal is to go to Las Vegas, which it will be this weekend, then I should hop on the freeway and go towards Las Vegas, right? So this is exactly it. We need to set goals in our mind. As a child, if you're super interested in something and you know math is important, you learn math. You learn finance is important by observing people doing finances. And you take that knowledge and you learn math because of it, or basic math, or because you want to help your mom shopping. This is the point of learning. We should all be students of the real world. Okay? And this education idea being limited to youth is just ridiculous. Our whole lives, we, 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 we have this time going up to maybe 24, it depends when you quit school, 18 to 30, it depends how long you go to school, of this being the time from when we're born to then of learning and then we stop. Okay? But no, when we are students of reality, Okay? and we observe reality, observe what we need to learn, and apply that to our lives, then we never stop learning. And once I hit 40 and realize that I need certain new skills, then I learn them. But we have a society today that when someone's 40, they don't think about changing their job. They get upset when someone takes their job because they don't know how to change. They don't know how to learn. And the only way they ever learned was being, being forced by an education, by a school system, by a person to learn irrelevant stuff that never helped them for their career. The vast majority of people today do not need, uh, did not need education whatsoever from, from first grade on to be able to do what they do today. Okay? They would have learned otherwise, the vast majority of them. Okay? So the concept of school, of this special place that people need to go to, to learn, it's utterly ridiculous. Okay? It's something that's a new event, a new invention of the last several hundred years. But beforehand, it didn't really exist. And even, but even when it started existing, it was a place where great people came to, de to debate more than... Uh, more than, you know, just be forced and told what they should learn by certain individuals. And everyone had to be there. The natural disposition of humans is to observe reality and learn what they need to learn from reality. Okay? Not from people at a school. I decided to make my eighth video on education. And this one is entitled, Curiosity. Okay. So um, I commented on this a little bit. Um, you know, I think pretty much my other seven videos are, are trying to crush the, um, the, the already made system of education. 
And while, you know, I didn't decide to make every little nuance of my educational philosophy thrown in there, I thought I'd make the, a lot of the major points that I believe in. But now I'm making the point of uh, making a point of creating my philosophy. You know, criticizing ideas, that's always great, but you always have to come up with the solution. And that's what um, this video is uh, focused at doing. Now, first of all, state a premise I think I've said in several other of my videos, little can be learned unless someone is interested, okay? Now, and, and even in cases when people say, oh, I learned and I might not have been interested, generally what is learned, or, or the, at least what is caused by the process of learning when you're not interested, generally causes much bigger problems than you not knowing the information that they forced on you, okay? It's kind of like when people, you know, uh, comment on the free market and say, oh, well, the free market won't take care of this minor problem, and then you're like, well, let's imagine that's true, that it doesn't. The problems that would cause, like the free rider issues or stuff like that, the problems it would cause are, are maybe significant, but to say the solution is to put guns in, in millions of people's faces and to start this horrible, evil government, tyrannical system, like, seems like the cure is much worse. And this is exactly the same thing I find with education, is that w people say, oh, you know, because kids might not learn something, we have to force them to do everything and, you know, cause all these psychological problems, obedience, approval seeking, competition, um, which I believe is bad in the realm of education at least. And so the solution to these things of kids not learning what you think you need to learn is generally way worse. The, the cure is, is worse than the disease, okay? So to me, I would take the disease any day, even though I don't think it's a real disease. So now this curiosity guided learning thing applies to adults. It applies to everything, okay? Um, it makes you learn, you know, everything you're interested in. I've read, you know, hundreds of books about t tons of different topics. In fact, seven years ago, I didn't really read any books. I read like five books in my whole life because I wasn't curious. And I think kill school and my parents killed my curiosity. But I gained it back and I decided to read. And it, it, it expanded to one topic to another. I first discovered libertarianism. It went to philosophy. I studied philosophy pretty thoroughly in a lot of ways. I went to economics. I went through economics and went to um, history. I went through history and went to psychology. And I did all these things without one teacher. I mean, I haven't taken a ton of, I've never taken a psychology, a philosophy, an economics class, but I like to think I'm pretty dang good at all of them, okay? So I decided to pick them up. I didn't have anyone forcing me. I didn't have anyone telling me I needed to learn it. I learned it because I was curious, and I learned that knowledge was possible. Okay? Am I some big exception to the world? I don't think so because, I mean, you know, for most of my life, I wasn't curious about these things, even though I, I think everyone at the base is curious about ethics. So anyways, everyone says, well, will this work, Aaron? How will this work? Like kids just picking what they want to learn when they want to learn it? I say absolutely. That's exactly what I'm saying. Kids desire, first, number one, to be competent. I've said this in several of my other videos, okay? Um, when I talk about kids, parenting, education, kids want to be competent. We sh it showed in their desire to walk and everything else and the de their desire to become independent. Now, some people say, well, some kids don't really want to become independent and fight it wholeheartedly, so we must force it on them. And I say, you know what? Most likely that's caused because someone fucked up really bad. Like, so this, this is always what irritates me when someone's talking to me about kids kids about psychology or whatever and we're going through it and they say well what about kids that just want to rebel and I say I don't believe rebellion is natural I don't I say they want to rebel for a reason so why do they want to rebel why what did they do now they will never want to answer it generally like they're a parent they had a kid that rebelled they don't want to think maybe I did something wrong but kids don't rebel for any reason for just whatever it's usually because they have very controlling parents and they don't like it understandably okay and I would rebel too I mean it's a horrible horrible thing that parents treat their kids the way they do. So, I mean, when people say, you know, kids don't do this, I always say why, and then they get mad that I ask why. Like, the fact that kids, you know, don't desire to be competent, you know, I mean, obviously they learn to talk, they learn to walk, they do all these things to prove they desire to competence, but um, the desire some kids have it more than others kind of proves me wrong or something. I think that's ridiculous. I think some kids, maybe some kids are a little bit more independent, but every kid desires independence. Every person in the world desires independence and to be competent, and the only ones that even show any hints of, of hesitance, someone messed up greatly, or something screwed up happened with that kid.
in my opinion, of course. Now, their, their desire to be competent will lead to uh, reading. Well, they will want to read. They will want to do math. They will want to do it just like they wanted to learn how to walk, just like they want to their independence. They will realize reading and math are so important to their independence. I mean, even if they we wait till they're 13, there's no reason. In fact, there's been things showing that plenty of kids that learn reading at the age of 13, as long as they haven't been psychologically destroyed, like yeah, most kids are, um, if they're not just destroyed and their confidence isn't obliterated, um, then even kids learning at 13, you know, at the age of 16, you can't tell the difference between a kid who's learned reading at 13 and the kid who's learned reading at 6. And so to me, I don't find any rush or imperative to force reading on anyone, okay? And I'm sure by the age of 13, kids will see how practical reading is, and unless they've been destroyed, will want to learn it. Next, and but this is another thing. That's ridiculous. Math and reading, I'm going to say something no one else says, are simple. They're easy. It's everywhere. All those concepts are everywhere. And unless a kid is destroyed, like, there's just no way they're not going to learn it. Those concepts are easy. Basic math and reading are easy things to learn, okay? And a few people say that because they want to make things sound all hard. Bull crap, they're easy. Okay, next. Children are amazingly philosophical. They will ask the most philosophical questions. In fact, you can observe it over and over. You ask most parents about the philosophical questions, can their kids answer them, and they're pretty deep stuff. Questioning, you know, ethics, epistemology, uh, golly, uh, metaphysics. They, they question everything, and their questions are freaking awesome. The ones debated by, you know, all the great philosophers and not so great philosophers. These are awesome questions that we kill in the kids. And the reason we kill them in the kids is because parents tend to not have any idea how to answer them. And that causes them anxiety and they decide to pass that anxiety on to their children. Okay? So once again, you know, I keep saying let their curiosity guide them. And they say, what, what about the kids that don't have any questions? They don't have any questions most likely because you fucked up. And you don't want to say that to me. You don't want to say, I fucked up as a parent. Therefore, you know, all my kid wants to do is play video games. Well, most likely it's because schools killed his desire to learn. Or you guys killed his desire to learn. But you don't want to say that because it would make you say, maybe I'm not that great of a parent. And you sure as heck don't want to say that. So you'll fight me tooth and nail when I say this stuff. So, um, next. I think a kid finding in his own road is so necessary. This is something, you know, some people, um, Van Dam, I, I had a debate with uh, Mr. Cropper about this a while ago. I think that finding your own road is imperative for a child and for anyone. They, the psychologically feeling of competence, that your life is yours, that your education is yours, that your life is in your own hands and your course is in your own hands, and that you are competent to find your way and you, you grow the confidence. I think this is so important for a kid. And when we say what you're curious in is not good enough. Now, I'm not saying that you can't ever talk about what you want to talk about. If, you, if you're interested in something and you say, I'm watching this science channel that I really like on this, then your kid goes, oh, well, yeah, that doesn't interest me. Well, you shouldn't bore him. But, I mean, it, treat your kid like a regular person. But I don't think you should like try to like introduce everything to him and say, you need to learn about this. A curious child, which every child is curious, is going to desire to learn all of these things in their own time, in their own way. Some of them won't desire to learn anything. Some of them want to know a lot about clouds. And give them the freaking time to learn it. Don't say, hey, you can learn about the Civil War for four days. Learn about the Civil War for 20 days if you want to. If you want to learn it for a year, I think that's great. It's your life. It's, let the children live their own life. And I know it sounds pretty radical, but um, I think it'll generally turn out for the best. Okay, I thought I would uh, make my ninth education video. This one on socialization. This is a major criticism of homeschooling, unschooling, and essentially not going down the main tracks that most people go on. Um, and that is that it, the kind of the argument that if you don't, you know, go to public school or you know at least private school where everyone's there and um, you're forced into the same environments as everyone else, then you're not going to learn social skills in order to interact with people. Now, I think this is totally um, inaccurate. Um, I think that most homeschoolers um, or people that deviate from the norm are people that 
deviate from the norm, um, which is kind of obvious to say. And so what, you get a large portion of people who are kind of odd people from the norm in socialization abilities who do keep their kids home and train them and their kids learn their same socialization skills. However, you see a lot of people um, that are homeschooled that have great socialization skills. However, these, this kind of idea of socialization I think is kind of a false dichotomy. It's, it's really kind of bullcrap because essentially um, well, when we're in an atmosphere that we're forced into, like education, we do learn certain survival mechanisms. And a lot of what people talk about socialization is talking about those survival mechanisms. Now, to me, this is kind of the concept of, of taming lions. Um, I don't believe people should have to learn how to tame lions. If they walk into a room and there's a lion in the room, I believe what they should do is learn to get out of the room, right? Um, it seems like other people say, well, kids have to learn to tame lions sometimes, and I say, why? Why do kids need to learn how to tame lions? My advice for people with dealing with lions is getting the heck away from lions. Then people would be like, well, there's a lot of rooms with lions in them, and I would say, yeah, and I want to teach my child. If, if I teach my child anything, it's how to stay out of rooms with lions in them, right? I mean, that's a great thing. Um, so a lot of people are like, well... Kids need to learn how to deal with jerks and bullies and all this stuff. And I totally disagree. You don't need to learn how to deal with that. That's like saying you need to learn how to have a to deal with a spouse that's that beats the shit out of you. No, you don't need to deal with that at all. You just say, no, I'm not dating that person. There's a, a lot of verbally abusive, what I would consider verbally abusive people out there, and I want to teach my kids to stay away from them. And there's abusive bosses or teachers, and I want to teach my kids to stay away from them. In fact, that's why I'm a big advocate of people getting a job on their own. So weirdly what happens is people are sent down this road of um, education and socialization and forced atmospheres and taming lions and they learn how to do all those things and then they keep putting themselves in situations where they keep having to tame lions and then they come up to me and say well kids need, how to, need to learn how to tame lions and of course my response is you're living kind of a crappy like direction. You're, you're going down this road that's really kind of sucky for you, but you think that's what the world is. You're used to only eating what's fed to you instead of going out there and looking for food, and so therefore you have to learn how to stomach it, and you think other people have to learn how to stomach that food too, when I'm going to tell my kids, don't eat what's being fed to you by these people. It's poison, right? But when people are so convinced that the food being fed to them by their overlords, their, their educational, political, um, and even uh, work overlords, is, is good food. When, when people are convinced of that, of course, by them, it's a bear story. Um, when that happens, well, of course what happens is, well, everyone needs to learn to stomach this food. That's important. And of course I say, no. There's a lot of great people out there. There's a lot of great job opportunities. There's a lot of great, there, there's even good people to work for. There's a lot of opportunities. Find one of them, okay? If you get paid less, you get paid less, but at least you enjoy your life. You have your self-respect and everything else. So to me, this kind of idea of dealing with jerks is, is it's a bear story. It's it's learning to, you know, tame lions. You don't need to learn how to tame lions, and you're better off for it. However, if I, I will teach my kid, if you ever run into a lion and it's pretty hard to escape, this is how to deal with it. And that's a pretty good strategy. Just like manners, I don't want to teach my kids manners. If they want to eat ice cream with their hands, they can eat ice cream with their hands. I don't care, right? So I, I'm just going to ask them not to hug me or don't touch my stuff or, you know, we can work it out. But it, the concept of manners or, you know, stuff like that is, is a really just controlling bullshit thing that we're taught in, in for, the, for the most part. So to me, but, but people would be like, but Aaron, you need to teach him because what if he goes on a date with a girl someday and he starts eating ice cream with his hands? I, I say, okay, then what I'll say to my kids, and this is totally what I plan on, is saying, okay, so... Okay, I don't mind you eating ice cream here. It doesn't matter if you eat ice cream. However, in the you know most people um, have this silly concept of manners. If you care about you know getting their approval or anything else like that in a certain time, then um, don't eat with your hands and don't do it this way. If you care, now if you don't care, go for it and just call them you know prudish, uh, just just call them prudes if they you know 
uh, start being jerks or anything like that. This solves all the problems very easily. Um, but for the most part, this concept of socialization is, is a, a horribly false dichotomy. Um, you know, most of the relationships we have in school are power-oriented power hierarchical things that are organized purely because we're forced in those atmospheres, and then we live the rest of the life, our life as if we're forced in atmospheres. When to me, it's if we weren't forced in atmospheres from the start, people would stop, start rejecting those sorts of atmospheres. People would say, I enjoy this person, so I'm going to be around them. And it becomes a lot easier. It reminds me of high school on the, um, during the lunchtime. At least this was at my high school. Um, in elementary school, you're forced around everyone. Middle school, you know. And then high school, it diversifies a lot more. So during lunch break, you can actually hang out with people. And instead of there being, like, a couple groups, there's 20 groups. And, yeah, that's social hierarchy. And I'm not glamorizing high school <laughs> by any means. It's kind of a, one of the worst times is high school. I'm just saying, during the lunch break, I always remembered how, you know, there was 20, 50 different groups of people that hung out, and you actually enjoyed it and had good relationships, and you didn't have to deal with jerks unless you were um, in a, you know, one of those worst kind of social groups. So, um, to me, the concept of this is highly problematic and one that needs to be broken, because it's a lot of times the last bastion of defense um, against homeschooling, or I should say offense to try to say, well, it's bad for this reason, because you can't really defend it on educational grounds. Um, I mean, homeschoolers slaughter public schoolers. Um, you know, it, it, there's just no way to defend it, so you just have to do it under socialization. And yes, people that go to um, public school are much e more easily controlled and social, political, and every other sort of atmosphere. And this is why it's pushed so hard. Um, you know, if you ever wonder why people push it so hard so often, it's because it is a great way of control and indoctrination. And uh, so a lot of political people are even like, we need to have all these people here so we can indoctrinate them. And the conservatives don't disagree because they want them there to indoctrinate, and they, the, the goal is to win over the indoctrination, right? Who's going to hold the gun of indoctrination over kids? That's the battle, but instead of, say, instead of saying, you know what, I'm just going to opt out and not let any of you guys uh, indoctrinate me, is a very difficult thing for um, most people to do. So to me... Um, the concept of dealing with jerks, to me, is is crazy. It's it's one of the most crazy concepts that we're taught and raised to deal with. Um, I was talking, I I, remember, I was teaching with someone a while ago, and she went up to the kids and said, "Sometimes you have to do what you don't gotta, what what you don't want to do." And I remember going up to him and I said, "I totally disagree with her." It was after she left, and I was like, "I totally disagree with her." I think you should only do what you want to do. That's it. Never do anything you don't want to do. Um, just make the compromise and say, okay, I, sure, I might not want to go to work, but I actually do want to go to work because of these reasons. So you, instead of looking at your life as some sort of struggle of what you don't want to do, instead realize that it's all just a compromise of different values and deciding what you do want to do and always choosing what you want to do. Um, and stop living in such a way that you have to deal with people. No. If, say, someone's a boss, say some CEO comes up to you and treats you like a jerk, I don't give a fuck who he is, just say, screw you, I quit. Like, it's very simple. There's a million different opportunities out there, and I'll tell you, the ones being fed to you are the least paying. The greatest paid people in the world, for the most part, are not the ones that learned how to deal with jerks. The people who, uh, you know, are happy, successful, and have money did not learn how to deal with jerks. They're the ones that either were jerks to other people or escaped the system, system totally. They started their own businesses. They... Um, they became brilliant investors or whatever. These are not people who learned how to deal with jerks. In fact, the, the more you can say and even present yourself in a way that says, I don't deal with jerks, the less people that are actually going to try to treat you jerky and um, the better opportunities you're going to get for it. So this socialization of trying to work with people in a forced atmosphere and dealing with jerks, it's horrible. Um, instead, develop a social life that's around people you enjoy and around people you like um, by pure free choice instead of compulsory anything. Um, so, anyways, this is a couple of comments uh, uh, on the topic. Feel free to leave some comments. And that's about it. Adieu.